A possible federal government shutdown is looming as Congress bickers about funding. Let's talk about that and a lot more with Republican presidential candidate Congressman Ron Paul of Texas. He's joining us uh, right now from the first of the nation primary state of New Hampshire. Uh, Congressman, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, before we get to the presidential campaign, put your congressional hat on for a moment. Congress can't seem to agree on almost anything nowadays, and there could be a government shutdown as early as this weekend unless the appropriations bills are, are passed. What's going on? Why is Congress so dysfunctional? Well, this dysfunction seems to be business as usual. How many times have, have we gone through this in the last couple of years? It sort of is to be routine. You know, the, at the last minute, they go down to the wire and they negotiate uh, up to the bitter end, oh, always trying to get one angle over the other one. So I, I, I don't think the government is going to shut down. It hasn't happened in a long, long time. So I don't think it's in the interest of either party to do it. So they'll probably come up with some compromise at midnight, uh, you know, and, and settle the argument. But it does send a horrible message uh, when, when various agencies of the federal government are told, get ready, uh, non, so-called non-essential personnel may be out of work as early as Saturday or Sunday. I mean, it, it sends a, an awful message out there that the people in Washington seem can't can't get their act together. I'm just I'm just saying. Right. But 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 if right. you disagree with me, go ahead. Right. No, I, I think the problem is, is that the people in Washington that I know don't, don't admit that we have a serious crisis on our hand, a financial crisis, and they don't know how bad it is because we're bankrupt and yet we're getting and we're preparing ourselves through the Federal Reserve to bail out all of Europe. And uh, there's no money and the debt is the problem. So they're up against the wall and nobody wants to cut anything. But if they knew how bad it was, they would cut and they would start living in uh, living within our means. And that means uh, looking at all the budget. But no, they're going to delay it. They think it's a football game and they're going to play it and see who's going to get the best edge in the next election to see who can maintain or gain power. And they haven't changed their ways, but they won't admit the necessary admission of that we are bankrupt and we better do something about it or this condition in our country and throughout the world financial system is going to get much worse. Let me go through a couple of the issues on the agenda right now. Increasing taxes unless action is taken the payroll tax cut will go away. Uh, the tax rates for 160 million Americans will go up. Where do you stand on extending the payroll tax cut for another year? Oh, I want to extend it because I see it as a tax increase and uh, the system isn't run like it should be. You know, we're supposed to have money in the bank and have a trust fund that doesn't exist. So we it's all been spent into the general revenues. And so many of these funds from Social Security has been spent overseas. So I want to pay for it. That's the whole thing. But I don't consider paying for it by punishing one group and taking that money and giving it to the other group. So I'd, I'd pay for it, extend the tax uh, credit cut and pay for it by overseas spending. Uh, it, for, for instance, why are we going to pretend that we're leaving Iraq and we really are and we're going to maintain the biggest embassy in the world and have 17,000 personnel there that are contractors making twice as much as our military? You can save billions of dollars doing that. So yes, we have to address it. This is a reason nobody wants to give up a nickel on this overseas expenditures and that's the best place to cut in order to save our system and take care of our social security beneficiaries and the health care the people who have become so dependent but i have no idea why they won't consider this and it, evidently the lobbyists for spending this money overseas and for the military is so powerful that neither democrats nor republicans want to really talk about cutting overseas spending Bring troops home. That would save billions of dollars. So the money is there, but this idea that you have to raise taxes on the uh, rich in order to pay for the payroll tax in, uh, cut uh, it makes no sense, and that's why they're arguing about it. And just to be precise, 17,000 Americans, about half diplomats, diplomatic support staff, the other half would be contractors, and you're right, they're going to be getting a lot more than U.S. troops. Uh, unemployment right. benefits, are you ready to extend the full range for another year? Yeah, I, I'd extend the uh, I'd extend the cuts so they don't have to pay for it. I don't want to reinstate the taxes. No, no, no. Unemployment I, benefits to just have ninety. Oh, the unemployment. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I mis misunderstood that. Oh, the unemployment. No, I'm not ready to extend that. I, I think. Uh, 
I, I think that, uh, you know, you subsidize long-term unemployment, you get more of it. But we have to change other conditions so people, you, you know, that's why the budget has to be balanced and tax codes change, regulatory codes change, monetary policy change so that we can get these jobs. But just further extending it, believe me, uh, there's less incentive. You know, to go back to work and make $8 an hour if you can get eight fifty while on welfare, uh, it's not likely. People... Uh, you can't extend it forever because that makes that's where the problems coming from. We're bankrupt. To to assume that we can and borrow the money or print the money is just big, digging a much bigger hole for ourselves, and that's why we have to admit the truth. Should the federal government have a role in recommending uh, when you can use your cell phone while driving? No. No way. I looked at Article 1, Section 8. They don't even say anything about telephones there. Uh, so, so, no, they, they shouldn't be doing that. That is really nitpicking away. And uh, if, if some state decides that you shouldn't do it, uh, they certainly have the authority to do that. But uh, what if I came up with a statistic and I could prove that uh, eating in a car causes more accidents than using your cell phone? Uh, it's on and on. Reckless driving, people who cause accidents, they're liable and responsible and should be punished for this. But this idea that uh, the federal government's going to write a rule about when we're going to use cell phones and then uh, force them maybe to buy a certain type of cell phone that's already in your car, that's more government than we need and one of the reasons why we're in such a mess. We got a lot of uh, questions for you because uh, I asked our, our, our viewers on Twitter, Facebook, you have a question for Ron Paul. Here's one. Uh, uh, would you consider Mitt Romney or Newt Gingrich as your vice president? Probably not, not unless they change their ways and change their beliefs and convince me of it. You're doing amazingly well in Iowa right now. You're not surprised. A lot of the so-called pundits are pretty surprised. Can you tell us right now, do you think you will win the Iowa caucuses? I think I have a good chance, but I'm not saying that uh, I'm not on, I'm not working on a day-to-day -day basis that, you know, I'm assuming, you know, I'm going to win this thing. No, I, I'm not at that point. But I'm assuming we're going to do very, very well and have a much better showing than anybody has given us credit for for the past year. Because if you do win Iowa, it shakes up the situation going into New Hampshire, South Carolina, Florida pretty dramatically. You want to give us a name or two of somebody you would consider as a possible uh, vice president? Probably not, not today. I haven't saw, thought it through, and there are so many people that I know that would qualify. I would hate to pick one or two names out right now, but uh, time will tell later on, maybe. One, one final question, Congressman, uh, before I let you go. Uh, I, in the past, I've called you an isolationist, and I get hammered by your supporters Good. out there. <laughs> when they, they write to me, and you're, they say, Ron Paul is not an isolationist. He's a non-interventionist. All right, tell our viewers right now, once and for all, the difference between an isolationist and a non-interventionist. An isolationist is a protectionist that build walls around the country. They don't like the trade. They don't like to travel about the world. And they like to put sanctions on different countries. So some of the people who call me that are actually much more in favor of sanctions and limited trade. They're the ones who don't want to trade with Cuba, and they want to put sanctions on anybody who blinks their eye at them. And yet the opposite is what we believe in. We believe Nixon did the right thing by opening up trade doors with China, because that is when we quit killing each other and that we are more at peace with them because we better be because they have become our banker. So non-intervention is quite a bit different. It's what the founders advised to get along with people, trade with people, and to have, practice diplomacy rather than getting, having this militancy of telling people what to do and how to run the world and building walls around our own country. That, that, is, uh, that is isolationism. It's a far cry from what we believe in. And just to be precise, you want to bring all U.S. troops home, not just from Iraq and Afghanistan, but from Germany, Japan, South Korea, every place else around the world. Is that right? Yeah, because I believe in national defense and our first responsibility, or probably one of the major responsibilities of the federal government is in national defense. And fighting these wars does not help us. I mean, getting bogged down in Afghanistan brought the Soviet Union to its knees and it's bringing us to our knees too. We've been there 10 years and it's, co it's contributing this huge deficit that we have. Those wars over there have contributed $4 trillion worth of debt in the last 10 years. So yeah, I want to bring them home and I think we'll be stronger for it. I think we'll have a stronger national defense and we'll have a lot stronger economy. If we're serious about straightening this, uh, this mess up, we have to deal with foreign policy as well as monetary policy and fiscal policy and tax policy. Ron Paul is uh, running for the Republican presidential nomination. Congressman, good luck. Thanks a lot.
Mitt Romney turns to Wall Street for